Biden laughs off request for bank records as he faces impeachment threat. Here's a clip. Uh, let's talk a little bit about what's going on. You know, uh, there are House Republicans who want to start an impeachment inquiry of uh, President Biden and his family. Uh, Kevin McCarthy has uh, suggested that they're going to try to get the bank rep records for the Bidens, although there's no yeah, good luck. suggestion that that uh, particular request has happened yet. And there you can see Joe Biden, uh, you know, he's tight-lipped uh, about this topic in particular. Yesterday, well, there you was... You can an, see his teeth a little on the bottom. You can a little yeah. bit, but he's tight-lipped right there again. Okay, that's Yesterday, he was at FEMA headquarters talking about the response to the hurricane. Uh, and he, there were reporters traveling in the pool, and they did ask him about different things, like uh, President Xi and uh, the government shutdown and Mitch McConnell's health. But when it came to the question regarding bank records and the Biden family, how did he react? Let's see. Roll the tape. President Biden, Speaker McCarthy, you give your bank records to Congress? Let's talk about why I'm here. Will you give your bank records to Speaker McCarthy request? Yeah, he laughed it off. You know, it's interesting. When when all this stuff started coming out about the corruption, my husband, who was in Congress for 10 years, kept saying, this is very easy. There are these are forensic, you know, financial investigations. It's really easy. The data is there. Just follow the trail. And you can see that, that wherever the whistleblowers were trying to go down these trails, they were told they couldn't. If it involved Joe Biden, they were blocked from going down. That's what they reported. And now you see that, you know, it's going to take an impeachment threat in order for Joe Biden to turn over those records. And we still don't even know if he'll do it. Think He's about this gonna, in contrast with the taxes uh, with Donald Trump. Yeah. Donald Trump's taxes had nothing to do with running for president. And they just tried and got the taxes after he left off. All they would try to do is get his taxes. What we're trying to find out is nothing personal. We want to find out if during your time as vice president, maybe senator, if you were actually using your influence to make your family ridiculously rich. Now, we know millions of dollars went to Hunter, and he's now staying in somebody's garage that's blowing paint through a straw. So I'm not sure where the money went. But his attitude of laughing it off is not flying anymore. Remember, about two months ago, when asked, you know, about a transaction, he goes, where's the money? Almost daring you. Go find the money. Well, they're finding a lot of money, and they're finding a lot of emails, and emails of $4 million here, $5 million here, Romania, uh, Ukraine, uh, the Moscow mayor, and you got China. It's all there. And I think one thing that Comer's done is especially smart. It's not going for taxes. They're going for the bank accounts. And right. now the bank accounts are showing, and these dummy bank accounts are showing transactions that are taking place, and they're getting uh, closer and closer to finding out. The question is, are the Republicans all on board for an impeachment inquiry? Because they have very little margin for error. They're in shell companies. I mean, you, right. I don't have not a shell company. Not dummy bank accounts. Uh, dummy companies. Yeah, shell there's companies. dummy companies. There's shell, com there's shell companies. There's accounts. these dummy accounts that he's talking about. It's very easy to find this out if if the Bidens would cooperate, because if they're innocent. Right. And, and again, this isn't just about making their family members if rich. By innocent. the way, some of these companies are in the name of grandkids. It's really weird stuff, right? Um, things that don't happen in any of our normal families. Uh, but that said, it's not just that they're getting fabulously wealthy off of this. It's that Joe Biden now is the president of the United States, and he's doing business. He's had business, dirty deals and, sh and, and, and dirty money right. coming from companies um, and from countries from which we are enemies with and w for, of which there are a lot of implications for American right. policy. So he is potentially compromised. That is why this matters. It doesn't matter about Hunter Biden. What matters is Joe Biden. Is he compromised by the money well, he took? Did the money go could, to him? Rachel, I think it does matter in this respect. If he's using his influence as vice president yes. in order to do favors for his son's companies and his friends, right. and to think that his son Devin, his son's friend Devin Archer is going to see the Secretary of State, you see the uh, communication between Anthony Blinken and Hunter. It seems like they're better friends than uh, better friends than uh, than Joe Biden and, and Anthony Blinken are. Right. And now you find that Eric Sherwin, who's got the money, is probably a few weeks away from testifying, and the thing where you bring back Tony Bobulinski and tie it all together. So this is going to be really interesting to see what develops. Over well, there. right yeah. now the it the, keeps still developing uh, debate more and more. in Congress is whether or not they have to have a vote uh, to start the inquiry. Uh, because right now, Kevin McCarthy does not have 218 votes to proceed with an uh, impeachment inquiry. And that's a problem because there are a lot of Republicans who would like to see that done. At the same time, 
uh, Kevin McCar uh, unless Kevin McCarthy is able to start that, there are going to be a, a number of uh, hardline uh, conservatives who are going to say, okay, you're not good at this job. We're, we're coming after you. So essentially by saying we're going to open an inquiry, it keeps a lot of the Republicans off his back for now. The big question is, there are a lot, because he doesn't have the 218 at this point, it's because you know, I've talked to some members of Congress and I was reading some news reports today. They say that while there's a lot of stuff out there and there are bank records, and in fact the Republicans also want the manifest from Air Force Two to see how many times yeah. Hunter got on the uh, big jet. At least 15. There are wow. a, a number of Republicans who say, I haven't seen any evidence yet that the former vice president, now president, broke the rules, Wait, because broke the, the law. Because what? the National Archives, by the way, which put trigger warnings on our founding documents, is holding on to emails or giving them over so heavily redacted Only that, 5, they're, that they're meaningless. Exactly, over 5,000. Thank you, Brian. And so this whole thing just, it, it smells so high of heaven. The question I have is It doesn't look good. The, the, the question good. I have isn't how many Republicans are on board for impeachment. My question is about the patriotism of Democrats who aren't interested in finding out if their own president is compromised. Right. Well, that's party yeah, politics. Exactly. That happens every year. Yeah, but, it, but, this is, but sometimes Trump. things have to go above party politics. If your president is compromised by the communist Chinese government because his family took money if that and is he provable, took money. If that's provable, that is big. And that's but, why it's important that Joe Biden, who says he's innocent, just release the rest of the Republicans so just easy. need to make that but, case. But that's why it's an inquiry, not an impeachment. They want to see, and that's what Nancy Pelosi did. I'm Steve Ducey. Yeah. I'm Brian. This Kilby. is also dumb. Everyone knows he's 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 guilty, right? I mean, all these emails that are coming out. Everyone that doesn't want further investigation, you know, it's political. They they don't care. They're they're like, who cares if he committed crimes? He you know he beat Trump, and that's what that's what we needed him to do. He's president now. It doesn't matter how bad stuff gets with the the economy or or with how it is in Maui and just all of this stuff, all these dumb laws, the border crisis, it doesn't matter. Well, you know, he beat Trump. Well, he's he's bad and he's corrupt. Well, no, he isn't. No, that's just propaganda. It's funny how much the left projects. All the left-wing media, it's all a bunch of lies all the time. And then they're like, oh, no, right-wing media is just a bunch of lies. Maybe some of it is. I don't know. You know, Fox, I know, lies about some stuff, but generally they're trying to get to the bottom of a lot of this this different stuff. And they're not the ba biggest fans of, like, Trump or anything either. You know, they want Ron DeSantis, right? They don't, they're like, oh, man, Trump. But at least they're trying to do, like, something, something decent, you know? But, yeah, the left, they just ignore all this stuff. The right, right wouldn't ignore if, if Trump was actually corrupt and this stuff was actually legitimate that they're trying to get him for. People on the right would be like, oh, yeah, no, we'll just move on to someone else. There's so many awesome people on the, on the right. On the left, apparently, no. You know, they always say Gavin Newsom. People aren't going to vote for Gavin Newsom after what he did in California with the pandemic. Maybe if that wouldn't have happened, people would be like, eh. Then he goes around in these national tours and just lies about everything, saying they're easy to look up and, and, and to debunk. So Gavin Newsom isn't going to make it either. And who, who who do they have left if they don't have Gavin Newsom? Yeah, they don't have anyone. But with with, with on the right, you got you got Rivik Ramaswamy. You do have DeSantis if you like DeSantis. I used to like him, and then once he started campaigning, I was like, eh, I kind of soured on him. You got Dave Smith, Rand Paul. You got a lot of really cool people that I think would make really good presidents on the right, but on the left, not so much. So they're just going to, this guy that they do have, he actually got in there. He beat Trump, you know, beat, beat Trump uh, in 2020. So now he's president. So they're like, no, we have to protect him because if he goes, if he goes, who do we have left? And then it's going to look bad in the party. So they don't care how bad he is, how bad it looks. And they were saying that's always part, party politics. Now with Trump, he got elected and the establishment didn't want to help him at all. The first two years, they had majority control. They didn't want to put anything through because they didn't like Trump. So like, no, 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 no. And then after, like, even now, like have like Brian Kemp's not even investigating Fannie Willis when she's obviously corrupt and it's all a bunch of nonsense, which she's going after him for. It's making a precedent where you won't have attorney-client privilege. She's going after lawyers. She's going after election officials just because they talked to Trump's lawyers. W what is she doing? But then Brian Kemp, the, the Republican uh, governor of Georgia, she's, he's like, no, we don't. I don't see any evidence that she's corrupt. It's like uh, uh, her whole case is the evidence that she's corrupt. But 
yeah, the Republicans, they, they're not going to play. They, people don't play party politics anymore. But on the left, that's definitely the case. And But I agree, that's how it's been. But nowadays, you know, the Republicans aren't, don't really seem like they're like that anymore. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe for daily news updates, smash that like button, share this video with your friends, and share your thoughts on the story in the comments below. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.